What up, BC Judgment Week? Let's extend it into a Tuesday, Wednesday, go on sinkos. I lost my video. So since I lost my video, we're going to do this nice and easy Japanese style. You hit pause. You print that bad boy out. You write it down on some papers. You email me it by a JPG file because that's what the AP wants. And let's see how you do. All right. Pause it. Swing, swing, swing. Let's get it. All right. A. Okay. They tell us about um, F being a function that has derivatives. We have a third degree Taylor polynomial at X equals negative two. How do we know it's X equals negative two? Because that says X plus two. And they're asking us to find what F of negative two plus F prime of, right? So we have to remember how we make these Taylor polynomials. Right? When we find them, we need to know what f of negative 2 is, f prime of negative 2 is, et cetera, et cetera. So the first one, it's kind of easy, right? Because f of negative 2 would be our first term. And they say this right here is a Taylor polynomial. Well, that would be like plugging a 0 in for k. Well, if you put a 0 in there, you get 1. If you put a 0 in there, you get 1. So guess what f of negative 2 is? It is ichi, ichiban. Okay, that's it. All right, so what about what f prime, and I'm just going to do one with you guys, then we're going to go to the answer. f prime of negative 2, remember, then it would be x plus 2, right, to the first power all over 1 factorial, right? That's exactly how we would do it. So let's go ahead and see what the first guy is. Well, we're going to put a 1 in there for k. If I put a 1 in there for k, because it's a first, you would get 2 plus 1, which is 3, so you get 3x plus 2 to the first. Well, that would mean f prime of 2 is 3. So, so far we've got that the first guy is 1 and that guy right there is 3. Okay. And then how do we find the next guy? I guess I'll help you guys out and I'll do one more even though I lost my video. Okay. If I put a 2 in there for k, I would get 5x plus 2 to the fifth. Well, remember for a Taylor x plus, if I put a 2 in there, you get x plus 2 squared, sorry. And, and just remember that this is equal to f double prime of negative 2 x plus 2 squared. But remember, it's over 2 factorial. So that's important to note. So if you look very carefully, that means that 5 is associated with the f double prime of negative 2 over 2 factorial. So that means f double prime is equal to 10. Okay, that means, so, so far, if you look very closely, this is 1. Whoops. This is 1, this is 3, and this is 10. And you know what? I think this is kind of tough, so let's do the last one together. Plug in a 3. Well, let's plug in a 3. There's 6 plus 1 is 7. And you get x plus 2 to the third. Remember, that is equal to f triple prime of negative 2, x plus 2 to the third. But remember, it's over 3 factorials. So remember, this all matches up. And if I wanted to, I could set them equal to each other, which means spling, spling. And so all you have to do is get that over to the other side. That is 6, which would be 42. Right, so we've got a ichi, a san, a ju, and then a 42. And then add all those bad boys up. What do you get? I get a 56. And that, I think, was probably the hardest part of this problem. And I said I was going to do this quick, but I sure didn't. Okay, but there it is. It was worth three points, okay, for that part A. All right, let's look at part B. All right, does uh, this particular sum... Does that sum converge? And if it does, find its value. And it actually says it does converge, so it's find its value. So remember, the only thing that we can find that it converges is if it's geometric. So that's a great sign that this must be geometric. If not, maybe I would explain. But let's take the stance that this is probably geometric. So let's try to simplify what's in parentheses here. That'd be, sorry. 2 to the n times 2 to the 1st over 3 to the 2n 
times 3 to the negative 1. Well, that 3 to the negative 1 really means it's upstairs. So we really have like a 6, right? And then in parentheses, I would have a 2 over 3 squared, which is 9 to the n. There we go. And then we're going to do that from n equals 0 to infinity. Well, if I do it from n equals 0 to infinity, that means I would plug a 0 in there. That means s is equal to my first term would be 6, right? And then it would be 1 minus the common ratio. Well, what is the common ratio? It's 2 ninths, right? So what would that be? That'd be 6 over 7 ninths. What the heck would that be? Well, that would be, okay, okay, okay. That would be 54 over 7. Not too bad, right? But they did say that they do want you to know the geometric series. So this is this teacher's attempt to show us that you better know the geometric series, right? A sub 1 over 1 minus the common ratio. Do, do, do. All right, let's go to C. So here's a nice fun problem that's a little bit different. They tell us that both of these converge. What would K have to be? Well, uh, the first guy, this guy here, that's a geometric series. So for that to be able to converge, that would mean the absolute value of the common ratio would have to be less than 1. And the only way that that would happen is let's multiply by 5 and we get the absolute value of k is less than 5. And so remember, that goes back to our Algebra 1 days, where that would have to be the first condition we'd have to be good at. Now remember, it's saying what would k have to be for this to converge for both of these bad boys, right? Right? Okay, so this right here is the little p series. Now what's the rule for the p series? Well, remember, the rule for the p series would be that this guy here, which would be the absolute value of 2k minus ichi, would have to be greater than 1. Well, remember, how do I solve that? Well, that would be like a greater problem. So we would want to know when 2k minus 1 was greater than 1 or when 2k minus 1 was less than negative 1. So if we solve both of those guys, this first half would give me a, what a 2k is greater than 2, so k would have to be greater than 1. This here would be a plus 1, so it'd be 2k is less than 0, so k would have to be less than 0. So we have to satisfy that, we have to satisfy that, and we have to satisfy that. And remember, this would be a, a great or problem. So k has to be bigger than 1. Okay, well, k is bigger than 1 at 1, 2, 3, and 4. Oh, right? But it can't be 5 because that has the less than symbol right there. Okay, and it did say integers early, so we're good to go. We're at integers. All right, and then k has to be less than 0. Well, k is less than 0 and satisfies that at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 5. Okay, so there we go. That gives us that one. Um, and there you go. That's part C right there. You would have got... Uh, three points for that bad boy. And we got one more to go. There's my solutions. Let's go back to our last one, which is D. And remember, my best guess this year, there's going to be the interval of convergence and there's going to be the radius of convergence. So make sure you could do those. And sweetie sweets, here we go with the ratio test. And I said I wasn't going to do much of this, but this is very important. So we're going to do it together. And first it says, is this alternating? And you would say, for show because it's got that guy right there in it. And that guy right there, if n always has to be an integer, and it does, that's going to be an alternator. So then it says to use the ratio test. Well, how the heck do we use the ratio test? Well, remember, we can throw out the alternator. So we're going to throw out that cosine of pi n, and we're going to add 1, so we get e to the n plus 1 over 2 over n plus 1 minus 1 factorial times 
And remember, we really divide by the nth term, but instead we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we get n minus 1 factorial on top. And we get an e to the n over 2 on the bottom. And that better be less than 1. That's when it's going to tell me when it converges. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this guy. The limit as n approaches infinity. If I simplify the top, that would be e to the n over 2 times e to the 1 half all over. That would be n factorial. And n factorial would be n times n minus 1 factorial. Why do I do that? Well, why do I do it? Swing, swing. Right? How about that? Swing, swing. And we get the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the 1 half over n is less than 1. And guess what? You plug in an infinity and e to the 1 half over infinity would be 0 is less than Ichiban. Right? And so what would that be, class? That means it would be convergent. Right? The radius of convergence, right? It would be a negative infinity to infinity for that bad boy. All right? Aloha! Meet us at Google Meets. Okay? And let's make sure we cram it up this week and we get you ready to get that Cinco Fi buy-in on that AP exam. Aloha!